Good morning and welcome to Homepage, a public affairs feature of 93.7 K Country and Wind FM 92.5, 95.5 and 107.9. I'm Kathy Dugan and I'm very excited to have our guest this morning, Katrina Plouffe. She is the artistic director from the Ocala Civic Theater. Katrina, thank you for coming. Good morning. It's so nice to see you. Thank you. Lots of big changes at the theater with um, Mary Britt, our beloved Mary, passing away not too long ago. So you are uh, getting things rolling at the theater once again. One of my favorite places in the world. And you have an incredible play that is different than anything else. And it's going to be here tomorrow, Monday, for Veterans Day. Uh, it's called When the Wind Stops. And it's kind of different than some of the plays you might see. So When the Wind Stops is the result of a grant from the GiveWell Foundation, mm -hmm. which is Publix, uh, in Polk County in 2016. Okay. Uh, we got a little bit of money to record 63 Central Florida veterans. Whoa. From World War II to the present. Uh, we ended up with well over 130 hours of uh, talking to these amazing men and women. Oh my goodness. About their experiences. And once we had this material, we then spent a very, very long time transcribing all these interviews and from there created a play in the veterans' own words. Wow. So the whole project took a little over a year and a half. Um, and then the first production was in Winter Haven, mm -hmm. Florida, with a cast of professional actors and veterans Whoa. and since then we've been touring uh the central florida area with this amazing historical record of people in our own backyards oh my goodness who it turns out are real heroes oh yeah they so are it was an amazing experience interviewing them um mm -hmm. the oldest veteran we spoke to was in his mid-90s um he had his service dog with him, which was really awesome. <laughs> and uh, we spent over two hours talking to him. Wow. He had extraordinary stories about World War II. We spoke to a number of World War II veterans, several more Korean War, which is kind of what I in my head call the Forgotten War. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, and those guys were just amazing. And mm -hmm. then a number of Vietnam. And then we move, of course, into the more contemporary conflicts in the Middle East. So just uh, just such a cross section of veterans that are involved in this. Is, this is so unique. Now, how are the veterans actually involved in the play, like when you're doing the play live? So in two ways, of course, the, the interview, the interview material is all wor their own words. So the play is not fictionalized. None. Nothing. Okay. Uh, I maybe wrote a few lines of what I call bridge material, getting okay. us from one sequence to another. But even that material is based on things people said. And you wrote this? I did. There was a writing team of myself and a, a great uh, lady named Darian Henney mm -hmm. and a gentleman named Christopher Eubanks. And the three of us, we modeled our process off of a theater company in New York City called the Tectonic Ooh. Theater Company. And the Tectonic piece, the name, refers to geology, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And tectonic plates. Yes. And what that theater company uses is kind of huge shifts in the world to base their theater on. And uh, so I feel like war is like a tectonic shift. Sure it is, yeah. Um, and I love the work of Tectonic Theater Group, and so we based our writing process on their writing process. Um, so the three of us, man, we worked. <laughs> I bet you did. I <laughs> we bet. Worked. Um, but everyone is a poet if you let them talk long enough. That's true. That's what I really believe. And it's true, and you hear it in When the Wind Stops. You, you hear how thoughtful and illuminating people can be if you give them enough time. So this is just, this is really close to your heart. It is. Is this the first play you've written? It can't be. No, it's no. not. Um, <laughs> I've collaborated on a number of, of plays, uh, mostly theater for young people, because oh. that's a place I think is important. It is. Um, to create work 
for young people to either watch or participate in. Mm -hmm. But this came out of such a need to capture some of the stories of our veterans, especially mm -hmm. World War II and Korea. Oh, yeah. As they start to leave us, it became vital to me. My dad passed away in 2007, and he was a World War II vet. Wow. And so, and he never talked. He didn't. He didn't tell you the stories. He told me one story. Wow. My whole um, life with him. Wow. And I thought, uh, we need to get these people to speak. Wow. Because this is history that's dying. It is. Um, my dad's a Vietnam vet. He always told us stories. I mean, he would mm -hmm. repeat them. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. But, you know, they become ingrained in you. And you think about these things. Some of them were... You know, stories of them getting through things, and they they had happy endings. Other stories, not so much. Um, time in the hospital or uh, time out on the field, and he was a, he kept those a little bit closer to him. He didn't let those out as much. Now, the veterans that you spoke with, they're true stories by these guys and and girls. They are, and. A lot of them are going to bring you to tears, aren't they? Yes, and a lot of them are going to make you laugh out loud. I like those too. Because human beings are really funny. Mm -hmm. And human beings all squished together in a big situation mm -hmm. are funny and filled with conflict and fear. It is equal parts funny and equal parts sweet and equal parts sad. Um, and I think what the writing team has done... And, and every time we perform it, our audience gets to talk back to us. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, so if you come and see our show tomorrow night or Tuesday afternoon, mm -hmm. there will be a talk back with the actors and myself uh, to just ask questions and find out about what it is like to take these stories. And remember, we are creating theater out of them. Sure. You know, it's not a therapy session. No, not at all. It's a real play. Um, and there's some beautiful uh, music that was composed by a great friend of mine um, that is a little bit of a part of the, the play. I think it's, it's deeply, deeply personal. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of theater that I love making because uh, oh, yeah. it speaks directly to you or to someone you know. Mm -hmm. um, these guys are really good at what they do now. They perform this a lot. Wow. And they're really solid about it, and they love doing it. They love sharing it. It's not super long. It's about an hour and ten minutes straight oh, wow. through. And then with the talk back at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's you're certainly in and out in, in, in about an hour, 45, two hours at the most. Okay. Um, is this something that you would recommend that maybe teenagers yes. would see? Uh didn't even hesitate yes. because they don't learn a lot of this in the history books right. anymore. There is a little bit of strong language. So mm -hmm. if you're a parent that doesn't feel comfortable with that, then, you know, you maybe want to think a little bit. But I will tell you, none of it is gratuitous. Mm -hmm. And these are, after all, soldiers. They are. And so when they are faced with uh, big things, they speak pretty strongly. They do. But none of it is hate-filled. Um I, I think it's appropriate for the stories they're telling. And it's and it's, it's something that kids, teen and not kid kids, but I mean teenagers, this teenagers. is something that they need to hear, that they need to see, that they need to ask questions about. I know there's there are teenagers in high school now in ROTC who are planning on going on into the military and they need to learn from the past to make a better future. And this I, can really help them. This play is so inspiring because these guys don't sugarcoat anything. I love it. And they don't sugarcoat coming home. No. Uh, a huge part of this play is about what it was like to come back. And when you're talking about Vietnam veterans... It wasn't pretty. It wasn't. No, it was horrible. A and these guys speak really frankly of that. And mm -hmm. they speak really frankly of the process of becoming uh, just a normal citizen again. Yeah. And what that feels like to them. Um, there's some really heartening, beautiful stories within all that. But it wasn't a bed of roses. No, they were not welcome back with open yeah. arms. It was during a time where there were a lot of protests about Vietnam. People felt very strongly about what was going on. But they were over there. They were doing a job. 
and they were doing the job to the best of their ability. And and that sh- it, I think that should be appreciated. The woman's point of view is really interesting. I bet. Um, one, oh. one of the seven actors is, is a woman. Mm-hmm. And uh, that point of view is fascinating. Um, and she talks a lot about being a mom mm-hmm. and also being a soldier and about what she hopes other young women will take from her time in the service. it So that's a great point of view in the play that I don't think a lot of people hear a lot. I don't think they do either. Um, the women don't really speak about it, especially the women that were back in the Korean War or in World War II. Mm-hmm. They don't talk about it. It's, it's just something that they didn't do. Right. Wow. Yeah. What started you on this? What 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 made you go, okay, I am gonna do this. I wanna I'm gonna map this out. I am gonna write this play. I'm gonna make this happen. You know, I lost my dad in two thousand seven and I knew exactly one story. So you wanted to make sure all these stories And got I out. thought this is awful. All of that left with him. Mm-hmm. Now that was his choice. I of course he was very, very young and he was in the Ardan. Um, so I think he saw really difficult, yeah. difficult things and maybe was a little too young to process them. So it was his choice not to talk about it, but it struck me. And then when my friend um, Dan Chesnica from Theater Winter Haven said, hey, I think I can get a grant. Do you want to work on this? It was just a perfect fit. Wow. <laughs> and so that, but it was my dad that inspired me. How did you get all of these different veterans together to interview? So Polk County, Florida, which mm-hmm. is where uh, the the writing team was from, right, um, is called the Purple Heart County. There are more Purple Heart citizens in Polk County, Florida than in anywhere else in the United States. I had no idea. I, neither did I. Wow. I, so that was really <laughs> cool. Um, and so Polk County has great veteran services. Mm-hmm. So when we decided to work on this the first thing we did was we reached out to the veteran services guys in polk county Mm -hmm. and they started sending us people and then the people that got sent to us started sending us people oh right because it became clear i think to them that this was going to be very special Mm -hmm. um many of them were in the audience when the play uh had its first performances oh my god and that was really moving having them there uh, and having them hear their words. None of the guys in the cast were interviewed. Okay. That was really important to me. Okay. Because I wanted it to be theater, not therapy. Right. Right. That makes sense. Yes. I wanted it ultimately to become a play that could be performed anywhere in the country. Sure. And so uh, the audience, those first couple of nights, did have a lot of the people whose stories we told. Wow. Yes. And it what was, was the wonderful. reaction? Were they, I mean, tears and laughter? Yes. And... Yes. Oh. And also, I think what they experienced more than anything was a sense of value. You know, art transforms us. That's it its intention, right? It does. It's going to illuminate you and change you in some way. For them to hear their words treated in that way where it it isn't their stories anymore it's art is a little bit like if you imagine if you were a soldier and you posed for a statue okay right you aren't you anymore no you're a representative of something bigger than you you are well that's your language right you tell these stories and then they become part of this bigger thing which is a play And plays are, you know, plays don't happen on stage. Plays happen in the audience. Right. So you watch it and there are your words or words of your colleagues and friends and compatriots at war. And I think that's what happens when a veteran sees this play is they see themselves up there, but they also see their friends. They do. They do. I think they really do. And they hear their friends. Oh, you and know. It, it had to have been special for their families that were there that maybe knew the stories or maybe they hadn't talked to the stories because sometimes your families are the hardest people to talk to. That was um, two conversations I had mm-hmm. with family members who said, 
I know that was my dad, but I never heard him tell that story. Oh, my gosh. I know. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. It was really thrilling. And it continues to be because that's art, Mm -hmm. right? Art has a longevity that passes human life. It does. And so um, a couple of the veterans whose stories, more than a couple actually, are in our play, have since passed away, right? Wow. Well, they were World War II vets. Yeah. So, so it's great because they live on. This is their legacy. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is wonderful that you've helped them do this too. This is incredible. I like the talk back aspect with the cast. I want you to tell me more about that. What what kind of feedback are you getting? It's really interesting because at I don't think we were particularly good at it at first. Okay. Veterans in the audience wanted to talk about their own personal experiences Mm -hmm. in a way that didn't pull it back to what we want to talk about with it which is how these stories became theater right because we want to talk about how art can help to preserve a legacy transform a legacy into something else right and also illuminate it Mm -hmm. since since then we've gotten a lot better at it we know what questions to ask the audience members back to them so that they become involved in the process of what it was like to see this as theater. Oh, wow. Um, Because that's really important. Um, You know, it's not a group session. Right. And I think at first we weren't, we wanted to be respectful and kind, but we also wanted to guide the conversation. So we got some help from a veteran services person who really guided us on sort of how to talk about this. Okay. And so now I think we're much better at it. Um, We love the, (laughs) we love the reactions where people go, I know that was my buddy. Oh my God. I mean, I know that wasn't my buddy, but that was my buddy that said that because it's all about recognizing. Yeah. Right. And recognizing the experiences and the stories and, I think the talkbacks also honestly help the actors because the stories they tell, Mm -hmm. there are several that are just gut-wrenching. Okay. And to have then the audience feedback, you know, this is how you helped me process something that happened to me 40 years ago. Oh, my God. With that story. That story helps me understand. It helps the actors, too, because... It's not, they're not out there singing and dancing. No. They're out there doing really difficult work. How did you cast the actors for this? Because it had to have been a really difficult process for something like this delicate. So we just opened the door um, specifically to veterans. Mm -hmm. And we had a two-day process uh, for that. And then once I knew who those people were going to be, then I started handpicking actors who I knew, who I knew could support these people who've never acted before. Wow. Right? Yeah. Um, And now they are indistinguishable. Isn't that incredible? Like when you see this tomorrow night or Tuesday, whichever day you're coming, um, uh, you will not be able to tell. That's incredible. I know. Oh my gosh. The veterans that are in it, these are their personal stories? or No, they they are not. Okay. Right. It was important to me that the actors in the play, whether they be veterans or not, were not telling their own stories. Okay, that's what I was confused on. I right. wasn't sure. If, okay, wow. Yeah. They're, so they're getting a whole different perspective. It's not, this is personal to me. No, you're, you're still acting. You're, you are telling some, you are responsible for someone else's memories. Wow. Mm-hmm. And some of these people may have been sitting in the audience watching it sometime. Yes. Yes. What was that feedback like having a veteran whose story you wrote into this, watching this person base basically be them? Do you know what was so interesting about that? <laughs> and, it, and it happens over and over again because so many of these stories are so familiar. Mm-hmm. Is that the guys and the audience member who stands up with a question, they just start talking mm-hmm. to each other. Like they, they share a bond that is unlike any other. And you'll see it. You'll see it tomorrow night and you'll see it Tuesday afternoon. It's, I think it's compelling to watch something so close to your own life. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, if someone 
did a story about people who work in radio. Sure. You would go, oh, my God. Yes. That's happened to me. I've seen movies like that where, yeah. I've, I mean, I've been fascinated and said, hey, I've, I've done that. Yeah. So, yeah. It's I guess. just like anything else. You feel your own life up there. Oh, man. And I, there's nothing like that, right? But yeah. theater is a mirror. Art, all art is a mirror. All art does is reflect back the human condition. And so this play is just reflecting back to the audience this experience of war and life after. The life after is something that a lot of people, I think they need to see because war doesn't end with war. Um, growing up, the daughter of a veteran, I know that my dad still goes to the VA every week. He still has somebody he talks to. Mm -hmm. And I mean... <laughs> I'm 47, so that tells you how long he's been talking about it. It doesn't go away afterwards. It stays with a person, sometimes their whole life. This script is very frank about that. There is no, I like to say something I'm very proud of with When the Wind Stops. There's no red, white, and blue on stage. Wow. This is not patriotic. This is patriots. Yes. And there's a difference. I like that. There's a difference between uh, pat phrases and everybody salute the flag and rah, rah, and look at all the red, white, and blue we have and yay, America. Sure. There's a difference between that and real honor and real sacrifice. And this play is about that. Wow. This is not a red, white, and blue play. There is frank discussion about the cost of sacrifice. People died in war. It's and not and some of them came home alive, but damaged. Very physically, mentally. Mm -hmm. And there's frank talk about that in this play. It, it is a very down-to-earth, honest portrayal of life as a veteran in the United States in the last half century. Wow. I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated with this. Um, you know, even if you are not the child of a, of, a, of a veteran, there's so much you can take away because we see them all the time. You know, we, we see veterans in grocery stores and we find ourselves thanking them. Thank you for your service. But really, what does that mean? Do you have any clue what that means when you're thanking somebody? And this is going to show you a snapshot of what you really are thanking them for, for the ugliness of war that they did for us. It's interesting because when you theatricalize it, right, you can remove yourself mm -hmm. a couple of steps away because you think, oh, these are actors and they're saying lines. It almost allows a greater intimacy mm -hmm. because it's safer. You know, it's not on a movie screen with gore and noise. And I, I said early on in the process, we walk by heroes every day and we don't know it. That's true. And those are the people I want on stage, mm. brought to life by the actors. And that is indeed what, what happens in this play. So how many showings have there been so far? Um, we're, hi, you know, we're, Probably close to 20. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's very um, specific. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a time of year kind of thing, Memorial Day or Veterans Day. Um, interestingly, we have a performance this year on Pearl Harbor. Oh, Day, wow. Which I think will be really interesting. Yeah, well. Um, just to have that conversation. Um, but every time we get back together, of course, to rehearse it. And we have now, so there's seven actors on stage. We have about 15 people trained okay. to do it because all seven aren't, you know, the original seven sure. are not available every time. Right. Um, so that's really fun because they pop in and out of various roles. So we have to get back together and, and sort all that out, you know. Right. But uh, we really have a great time. It's uh, incredibly joyful in an odd kind of way, I guess, because we know we're doing something really important amazing and <laughs> and we can't wait to share it 
I, I really hope that Ocala comes out for this. Um, the ticket price is really low. It's mm-hmm. $15. Yeah. Um, and all of that goes to the actors. Nobody's making any money on this. Wow. Um, it's $10 for veterans, active duty military, and students. So it's a really great ticket price. It's um, a great evening. If you come uh, tomorrow night for Veterans Day, we're doing a reception in the lobby beforehand. So there's snacks and beverages. And so it'll be a lovely evening. Um, oh. There's going to be an exhibit of uniforms and memorabilia in the lobby. And then you'll come into the theater, see the show, and then we'll do the talk back. Wow. And then our guys always just come off stage and chat with the audience personally. So that's such the, that's the nice thing about the Ocala Civic Theater. I've always loved ever since I first stepped foot in there in college is the intimacy of the theater itself. It it, it feels intimate. Yes. Yeah. It's only 347 seats. Yep. So you really do feel like you're in well, with a play like this, like you're in the living room with these guys. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Is it not, Is it just like one scene? Do uh, you have one set going one on? One set. Very simple. Um, because it's the stories. Right. Of course, that we want to um, focus. Share. Yeah. So, yes, it's very simple. We tour it. You know, we can put it in a truck and bring it anywhere we want to go. Um, and it's a lot, you know, there's lighting cues, which makes it really nice. Oh, yeah. And some music and sound, which is great. Um, there are moments, I think, that are so sweet. What I, when we sat down, the writing team, we agreed, no red, white, and blue, mm-hmm. and no overtly sentimental. Okay. We're not up there to, like, make, tell you to feel a certain way. No. Um, but the stories, particularly the stories around the holidays are very, very sweet and sometimes hard to listen to because yeah. these young, young, young men were so far away from home. Oh, yeah. You know? But I, I just know if you come and see it, you will love it. I have never, ever talked to an audience member who didn't say, I'm so glad I took this 90 minutes out of my life to see this. I've never seen anything like this, and it's made me think and feel things I've never thought and felt before. That's incredible. You don't want to miss it. Again, Katrina, um, one of the writers of (laughs) When the Wind Stops, live on stage at the Ocala Civic Theater, and that is tomorrow night at 7 and also Tuesday afternoon at 2. And it's only 15 bucks. Come on, people. $10 for veterans and active duty military as well as students. And it's sponsored by Hires Baxley and WUFT. Now they can get those tickets the day of the performance? They can, or you can call the box office. That's fantastic. That number is 352-236-2274. You can also go to OcalaCivicTheater.com. Remember, it's Theatra with an R-E on the end. And get information as well. And this just, I am absolutely fascinated by this. And thank you so much, Katrina Plouffe, Artistic Director of the Ocala Civic Theater, for being with us this morning and talking about this incredible, obvious labor of love. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Homepage is presented as a public affairs feature of 93.7 K Country and Wind FM, 92.5, 95.5, and 107.9. We welcome your comments. Please email me. Our email address is homepage at ncfm group.com. You can listen to homepage by going to our websites, 937kcountry.com or windfm.com. I'm Kathy Dugan inviting you to join us next Sunday for homepage.